Hey there programming fans, it's Mr. Baumgarten coming back at you with another video. This time we are starting a new series on Python game programming using the Pygame library. Now if you don't have your Python installed, make sure that's your first prerequisite. Uh, click the link to the video that's nearby. That would be showing you how to set up your system if it is not ready to roll. Uh, I will also assume you have some basic uh, Python programming skills, variables, if statements, for loops, while loops, uh, basic functions, that kind of thing. Uh, this series builds upon those basics, so if you don't already have those, you need to go back and learn those in some other way first. This series is going to walk you through an example project. Uh, we are going to build a little platformer something that kind of looks similar to what you can see on screen now uh, you know your classic Mario uh, style uh, platform game uh, yeah we're gonna have a lot of fun building this so uh, some reference websites for you uh, pbaumgarten.com slash python slash pygame.html will take you to my reference pages for pygame uh, where there's a whole bunch of example uh, code here on how to do different things uh, with Pygame. Uh, so this is kind of more about look up the skill and it shows you a little bit on an example of how to use it. So an example how to use arrow keys, an example on how to use the mouse, etc. Uh, so a different approach to what I'm going to take with this series of videos where we will begin with a particular project in mind and work our way through it. So this video we're going to look at basic drawing and player movement on screen and I'm going to start off by discussing a template which I will have linked to in the description. This is my blank shell Pygame template that I will use as my starting point and I recommend you probably consider doing the same. It has been developed over the years of having been teaching Pygame to uh, middle schoolers and high schoolers for quite a number of years. This is the structure that seems to work best in terms of uh, organizing all the different elements of the game uh, and allowing it to build and grow into uh, what projects my students have in mind to build. Uh, so when the game starts, we start off by declaring a width and a height variable for our screen. We initialize the Pygame graphics system. We initialize the Pygame sound system. We create a window that we are going to be drawing everything in. Uh, we create our clock and then we run our first scene. So the way that I've structured it is each scene gets its own function. And then when that's in this case, when that scene finishes, we get Pygame quit. So within the scene, so this scene is main, we've just got the one scene happening here. The scene contains your game loop and that will run at 25 frames per second. These two lines of code here, your Pygame display update and your clock tick must always be the last two lines inside your while loop, your game loop. First thing you're probably going to have inside your loop, not always, but most of the time, will be something that clears your screen, gets rid of whatever you drew last clock tick, uh, and blanks out your screen so that you can draw everything fresh. Then you're going to process your events. So we start off by creating a keys pressed list that contains all the different keys that are, are pressed on the keyboard at this instant in time. And we also loop through the Pygame event queue. This is a mandatory action that we have to do and our game will freeze up on us if we don't. Um, so at the very least we have to look for the quit event type. Um, so that's what that does. And then basically space here for all of your game logic to happen. So the first thing we are going to do today, we, uh, once you've got a copy of the template, well, let's take a look at lesson one and see what I've got in here. So I've got, this, is, this has come from my template. Uh, there was one extra line that I actually added down here, which is the title bar. Yeah, 
and we all want our title bar appearing on our screen so add that to it uh, and I'm just going to tell it to run main so main 2 so you can see here I've got two different scenes built and it really is as easy as just creating a separate function for each and copy, copy one function, paste it into another, rename it and then tweak it for however you want your second scene to look. So this time, what are we actually doing? So remember that the game loop runs 25 times per second. So we're going to start off by drawing something on screen. And I'm creating here a rectangle. And I'm saying I am wanting to draw this rectangle at location x, y. So pixel value x and y. Uh, so just a quick recap on the coordinate system of Pygame. The top left corner is 0, 0. So it doesn't adhere to the Cartesian plane you're used to from mathematics. The x coordinate increases as we do go to the right. But the y value coordinate increases as we go down. So draw a rectangle at this x and y location for a width of 50 pixels and a height of 50 pixels. So actually this doesn't draw it, this just creates a rectangle. Uh, and we are creating it as a variable or an object called player. Then here's the line that sets up this graphic system to draw it for us. Um, I want to draw, uh, I want Pygame to draw a rectangle on this window of this color of this coordinate uh, location and shape. So that's the, our player rectangle there. So that, that just specifies location and shape for us basically. A quick recap on how the color system works. It is an RGB color code system where the first number indicates the amount of red. It's a value between 0 and 255. The second number indicates the amount of green and the third number indicates the amount of blue. So you can see here this is mostly red, no green and a lot of blue happening here. So what is this x and y? So these are just integer variables that you can see I have declared up the top here. Before I went into my loop I initialized them to 0, 0 so the game, the rectangle will appear in the top left corner. So if I just run this piece of Pygame code, I see, sure enough, I get a purple looking rectangle, 50 by 50 pixels in the top left corner. Now the other thing I can do, because the location of this rectangle or square is set by an x, y variable, I can change that x and y variable on the basis of key presses. So how have I set that up? And that is happening here in my event loop. So we see I added to this, we had if event type quit, and then we were setting our quit variable to true, which was stopping our loop. But then there is another type of event called key down. And this triggers once for every key press. So I can keep my key down, but it will only run this once, no matter how long I hold the key down. And so to see which keys I am pressing, we look in the event.key object and this will give us a number and that number happens to correlate to the ASCII value of the individual keys. So to get the ASCII value for the lowercase letter a, I use the ORD function. And so I can just say, okay, if this number is going to be equal to that number, then I know that the lowercase a has been pressed. And I am going to look up my x coordinate, subtract 50 off it, and then save it back into my x coordinate which will have the effect of moving at 50 pixels to the left. My D, lowercase d, I am increasing uh, x by 50, saving it back. So it has the effect of moving my x coordinate 50 pixels to the right. W is taking 50 off of y, so it's going to move it up. And S is adding 50 to y, 
so it's going to have the effect of moving it down and you, so you saw how that worked. The other way that we can look at keys is to use this key pressed list and that's what my main two does. So I'm going to switch this code across to run a scene in main two and show you what is going on here, how this works differently. This time, instead of using the for loop and doing if event type equals key down, instead we are looking inside the keys pressed list. And the keys pressed list will use the ASCII code value of the individual letter uh, as the index value of the list to indicate if the key is pressed or not. So if I look up the ASCII value for lowercase a, look up that index location inside the keys pressed list, if that is set to true, then I know that the, uh, that the letter A is being pressed. And so I can move to the left. If the D is set to true inside this list, then I know that the, that letter is being pressed. So I can move my X coordinate 50 pixels to the right, W to move, up and S to move down. The other thing that I've added here is something that's going to keep my X and Y values within the bounds of the screen. If my Y coordinate happens to become less than zero, that means my square is trying to is going to be drawn outside the frame of the screen. It's going to be drawn above the screen. So I'm saying if it becomes less than zero, then let's just set it back to zero. Same with the X, I'm saying if that becomes less than zero, set that back to zero so that it doesn't go outside the boundary of the screen. And then on the other end, going down, uh, if my Y value becomes greater than the height, then I know I've fallen off the bottom. Uh, and so I wanna set the Y value back to the height, but I actually also wanna take 50 off of it so that because Remember that these coordinates are the top left corner of my uh, rectangle. So if I didn't take the 50 off of it, it would be on the very bottom, but I wouldn't actually see it because, you know, or I might see one pixel row of it and that would be it. So really I actually need this minus 50 here because I, I never want the value to become greater than minus 50. And I need to do the same with my width for the X value. So if I save both of those and run this one, this time now uh, it moves a lot faster because it, within the loop, it is now checking 25 times per second, am I holding the key down? Uh, and so I can get several movements out of each press instead of only one movement per press. And you can see here, it's keeping it within the boundaries of my screen for me as well. So keys pressed or the key down in the event loop, two different ways of processing keys. And it really depends on if you want it to be uh, causing a continuous action or if you want it to only prompt an action once for every key stroke uh, would depend upon which method you used. And you might have both methods running in the same game doing different things. So that's drawing a rectangle and getting some basic player movement happening. Next video, we are going to take our rectangle and turn it into an animated sprite. It's going to start looking really cool really quickly. This is Mr. Baumgarten signing out.